Welcome to Analytical Chemistry Vision, a platform dedicated to exploring the theoretical and experimental aspects of chemistry, blending classroom learning with laboratory research to enhance understanding and inspire innovation in chemical science. Let us start interesting and highly useful topic for UG, PG, and research students, that is first part volumetric or titrometric analysis. It holds great importance for students, as it strengthens their understanding of analytical principles, experimental skills, and data interpretation essential for environmental, pharmaceutical, and industrial chemical investigations. The content of this lecture includes, first one is, criteria for reaction in titrometric analysis, second one is, primary standard and secondary standard substances. Third one is, the use of terms such as, equivalent and molecular weight. Fourth one is, expression of concentration of solution. Normality, molarity, PPM, percentage, 5. Internal and external indicators in volumetric analysis. Here we will know, what is volumetric analysis. Volumetric analysis or volumetric titration is a precise analytical technique used to determine the concentration of an unknown solution. A solution of known concentration, called the titrant, is added gradually to the unknown solution until the reaction is complete, usually indicated by a color change or suitable chemical indicator. The process of addition of standard solution from burette, called titrant, to a conical flask which contains known volume of the solution of the analyte, called titrant, till the completion of the reaction is called titration. Next, we will see, what is the criteria for reaction in volumetric analysis first criteria is. Completeness of reaction. The reaction between analyte and titrant must go to completion, leaving no significant amount of reactants unreacted. Example, strong acid strong based neutralization, HCl reacts with NaOH to form NaCl and H2O second one is. Definite stoichiometry. The reaction should have a known and fixed stoichiometric ratio. Example, Ag plus ion reacts with chloride ion to form AgCl in the ratio of 1 is 1. Third one is, rapid reaction. The reaction should occur quickly to allow accurate endpoint detection. Fourth one is, high selectivity. The reaction should occur specifically with the analyte, without interference from other substances in the solution. And now fifth criteria is measurable endpoint. There must be a clear and detectable endpoint, often indicated by Color change, acid base indicators. Precipitation, potential change, redox titrations. Sixth is, stability of reactants and products. Both reactants and products should be stable under experimental conditions. No side reactions should occur. Seventh one is quantitative reaction. The reaction should be quantitative, meaning that all analyte reacts according to the stoichiometry, allowing precise calculation. Next thing is to understand is what do you mean by primary and secondary standard substance, which is very important in volumetric titration. Can we directly start titration of hydrochloric or sulfuric acid with sodium hydroxide which is acid-based titration? Another one is can we do the titration of silver nitrate with sodium chloride, which is precipitation titration? Next is titration of sodium EDTA with calcium 2 plus ion, which is complexometric titration? And finally, titration between potassium permanganate with ferrous ammonium sulfate, which is redox titration. Among the given chemical substances such as hydrochloric acid, zinc sulfate, sodium hydroxide and oxalic acid, can we decide which one is primary and secondary standard substance? Then, what is the criteria for any chemical to be primary or secondary substance? Here, we will first know the definition of a primary standard substance. A primary standard is a highly pure, stable, and well-characterized substance that is used to determine the exact concentration of a titrant. Let's see the important characteristics. It has very high purity, usually greater than 99.9%. It is chemically stable and does not react with air or moisture. It is non-hygroscopic, meaning it does not absorb water from the air. It reacts completely and rapidly with the titrant. Some common examples of primary standards include oxalic acid, used for the standardization of sodium hydroxide, sodium carbonate, used for the standardization of hydrochloric acid, potassium dichromate, used for the standardization of ferrous ion solutions. Next we will know the definition of a secondary standard substance. 
A secondary standard is a solution whose concentration is not precisely known and must be determined by standardizing against a primary standard. Characteristics Less stable or less pure than primary standards. Cannot be directly weighed accurately. Often prepared in bulk for regular use. Examples Sodium hydroxide, NaOH, solution standardized using oxalic acid. Hydrochloric acid, HCl, solution standardized using sodium carbonate. Potassium permanganate, KMNO4, solution standardized using oxalic acid. Further the knowledge of equivalent weight and molecular weight is also parameters that one should know for quantitative determination of substance in volumetric analysis. The equivalent weight is the mass of a substance that reacts with or supplies one mole of H plus ion, or hydroxyl ion, or electrons or ion in chemical reaction. And the formula for equivalent weight is molecular weight of substance by N, where N is H plus ion, or hydroxyl ion, or electrons or ion involved per molecule. For examples, the equivalent weight of H2SO4 will be 98, which is molecular weight divided by 2 and 2 is 2 hydrogen icons involved in reaction. Finally, the equivalent weight of H2SO4 will be 49 gram per equivalent. Similarly, the equivalent weight of NaOH will by 40 molecular weight, divided by 1, where 1 is which is number of hydroxyl group in molecule or reaction, give to 40, and finally the equivalent weight of NaOH is 40 gram per equivalent. Next is molecular weight or molar mass, this is sum of atomic masses of all atoms in a molecule. Expressed in grams, the purpose is to tell the mass of one mole of a substance. For example, molecular weight or molar mass of water molecule, H2O will be adding the atomic weight of 2 hydrogen, which is 1.008 plus 16, which is atomic weight of oxygen. Finally the molecular weight or molar mass of water molecule is 18.016 gram. Further, the molecular weight of NaCl can be calculated by adding the atomic weight of sodium that is 23 gram and chloride that is 35.5, which is equal to 58.5 gram. Similarly, the molecular mass other compounds such as copper sulfate, potassium nitrate, methane can be calculated as given here. Now, we will understand the concept of standardization in volumetric analysis. Standardization in volumetric titration is the process of determining the exact concentration of a solution, called the titrant, by reacting it with a primary standard whose purity and quantity are accurately known. Let's see why standardization is needed. First, the titrant may not always have an exact concentration. For example, sodium hydroxide absorbs moisture and carbon dioxide from the air, which changes its concentration over time. Second, it ensures accuracy. By using a standardized titrant, we obtain reliable and reproducible results in analysis. Third, it compensates for instability. Some titrants, such as iodine or potassium permanganate, are unstable and their concentration must be determined freshly before use. Hence, standardization is a crucial step to ensure the precision and accuracy of volumetric analysis. Therefore, the given secondary standard titrated with primary standard substance. Examples are NaOH versus oxalic acid, acid based titration, silver nitrated versus sodium chloride, precipitation titration, sodium EDTA versus zinc sulfate, complexometric titration, potassium permanganate versus ferrous ammonium sulfate, redox titration. Now, let's understand how the concentration of solution can be expressed in normality, molarity, percentage, mole fraction, and ppm during quantitative analysis of unknown substance. Let us start with normality, which can be defined as one of the important expressions of concentration. Normality is defined as the number of gram equivalents of solute dissolved in 1 liter of solution. It is mathematically expressed as, normality, n equals the number of gram equivalents of solute divided by the volume of solution in liters. Now, let's learn how to prepare one normal sodium hydroxide solution, how much weight or W of NaOH is required. For this, the above formula become, W is equal to normality multiply with equivalent weight and volume of solution divided by 1000. Which become 1 normality is multiply with 40 an equivalent weight and 1000, a volume of solution divided by 1000, which comes to 40 gram. This means 40 grams of NaOH pellets was dissolved in 1 liter of solution. Molarity is another most parameter to present the unit of concentration. 
Molarity, M, is the number of moles of solute dissolved in 1 liter of solution, unit is mole per liter. The formula for calculation of molarity is equal to number of moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liters. Or it can be also expressed as weight of solute, W, divided by molar weight, into volume of solution in liter. However, if we want to determine weight of the substance needed to prepare one molar solution, the weight, W, is equal to molarity multiplied with molecular weight and volume of solution divided by 1000, which become 1 molarity is multiplied with 40 gram molecular weight of NaOH and 1000, a volume of solution divided by 1000, which comes to 40 gram. This means 40 grams of NaOH pellets was dissolved in 1 liter of solution. Similarly for 1 molar potassium sulfate solution, 174.3 gram substance is dissolved in 1 liter solution. Further, sometimes, percentage is also used for preparation of solution. First one weight by volume is W by V, percentage, which is equal to weight of solute in gram divided by volume of solution in M. L multiply by 100 percentage. This is when solid is dissolved in liquid solution. For preparation of 10% glucose solution, 10 of glucose dissolved in 100 ml of double distilled water. Similarly, 15% NaOH will be prepared by dissolving 15 gram of substance dissolved in 100 ml of double distilled water. However, the weight by volume, both is liquid solution that is V divided V the formula become, volume of solute by volume of solution, and multiply by 100%. 10 percentage, ethanol is prepared by dissolving 10 megaliters of ethanol into 90 milliliter of double distilled water. Now, let's understand the concept of parts per million, or ppm or milligram. ppm is used to express very low concentrations of a solute in a solution. It is defined as the mass of solute divided by the mass of solution, multiplied by 10 to the power of 6. Here, we'll learn how to prepare a 1000 ppm sodium solution from sodium chloride, NaCl. Step 1. Determine the sodium fraction in NaCl. The atomic mass of sodium is 23, and the molar mass of NaCl is 58.5. So, the fraction of sodium in NaCl is 23 divided by 58.5, which equals 0 0.393. Step 2. Calculate the amount of NaCl required for 1000 ppm sodium. Using the formula, ppm of sodium equals mass of sodium, mass of solution, multiply with 10 to the power 6. For a 1 liter solution, which approximately weighs 1000 grams, we need 1000 milligrams of sodium. Now, to find the amount of NaCl that contains this sodium, NaCl required equals 1000 mg divided by 0 0.393 equals 2545 mg or 2.545 g. So, to prepare a 1000 ppm sodium solution, dissolve 2.545 g of NaCl in 1 liter of water. Now, let's discuss indicators used in volumetric analysis. Indicators in volumetric analysis are special chemical substances used to detect the end point of a titration. They signal the completion of the reaction between the titrant and analyte through visible changes such as color transition, formation of a precipitate, or other measurable effects. These indicators ensure precision and accuracy in quantitative chemical measurements. There are two main types of indicators first one is, internal indicators second one is, external indicators. First we will learn, internal indicator. Internal indicators are substances added directly to the titration mixture that undergo a distinct color change within the solution at or near the equivalence point, indicating the titration's end point. Let us see the example, or a strong acid versus strong base titration, we commonly use phenolphthalein. Add a few drops to the analyte, the solution remains colorless until the end point, then it turns pink, indicating neutralization. In strong acid versus weak base titrations, methyl orange is often preferred. It appears red in acidic solution and shifts to yellow near the end point. For weak acid versus strong base titrations, phenolphthalein again works well, the solution changes from colorless to pink as the equivalence point is reached. Some titrations, such as weak acid versus weak base, do not show a sharp color change with common indicators. In such cases, no suitable visual indicator exists, instead, use a pH meter or conductometric method to detect the endpoint accurately.
An external indicator is a substance used outside the titration flask to determine the end point of a titration. It is not added directly to the reacting solution. Instead, a small drop of the titrated mixture is taken out and tested with the indicator placed separately. Here are a few important examples. In redox titration of iron 2 plus versus K2Cr2, O7, the external indicator used is potassium ferrocyanide, represented as K. During the titration, a blue color appears when Fe2 icons are present. This blue color disappears at the end point, indicating complete oxidation of Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. In iodometric titration, such as copper 2 plus versus sodium thiosulfate, Na2, S2O3, the starch solution acts as an external indicator. The starch forms a deep blue complex with iodine, which disappears when all the iodine has reacted with thiosulfate, marking the endpoint. In titration of cerium 2 plus with iron 2, again potassium ferrocyanide is used as an external indicator. Here too, the blue color indicates the presence of Fe2 plus icons and fades at the end point, showing that oxidation is complete. To summarize, volumetric analysis is a precise and essential technique in analytical chemistry used to determine the concentration of unknown solutions. It involves concepts like reaction criteria, primary and secondary standards, equivalent and molecular weights, concentration expressions, and indicators. Understanding these fundamentals helps students perform accurate quantitative chemical measurements in laboratories. Thank you for watching the analytical chemistry vision. Next part of volumetric analysis, part 2, we will learn the principle, procedure and theory color change of indicators in acid base and redox titration and third part of volumetric analysis, part 3, we will learn the principle, procedure and theory color change of indicators in precipitation and complexometric titration. If you like this video, please visit our channel for more interesting theoretical and experimental lectures. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and share your feedback in the comments to help us improve further. Thank you.